Mark Farash and Protect Dog Training with our second video from this morning. We had Buddy out. We were working him with the uh, recall, basically, into that nice, real fast and quick, boom, sit right in front of you is what we're after, right? And you notice that I'm giving him his reward between the legs with a, that toy, and that's creating a, a uh, basically a, uh, the waiting, all right? So he's got to come in, sit, look at me for a couple seconds, I usually 1001, 1002, 1003. There's a lot of uh, things, exercise you're doing that you always want to learn to settle. And that's what I was mentioning earlier that I have kind of a bad habit of not letting my dog settle. I come to a stop and I don't count to three, I don't let the dog settle. It's important, especially if you're going to get into competition, right? And I don't do competition that much. I usually do a lot more uh, demonstrations and showing off at the parks and in malls and that kind of thing with public and general public but usually that's the ignorant gen general public and so they have no clue if I was to be judged by a judge my work's pretty sloppy if you really think about it maybe it looks good because I like a high drive dog I go through everything um, when I was working Luna you would notice me I will do a uh, focused heel I will do a heel and then I expect the dog to be healing. I give a lot of body language and a lot of things, but it's really nothing more than a parlor, parlor trick because I'm not going to be out there competing for 25 minutes and I haven't built the dog to a point that these folks do with their dog being very focused the whole way and really have that intensity in the work that they need to for competition. Okay? I do just enough generally when I have a dog in to show off to the customer to make them feel good, to let them see their dog kind of prance and break into it. But I don't really get set because most people don't go to competition. Most of my customers are just general customers. And then I do a with me command, which means just with me. It's a loose leash healing, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a heel exercise, but I let my dog relax and because I'm in an environment. So it's a with me. So I have two different commands, a with me and then a focused heel command either OPA or whatever I'm asking a buddy uh, or something else. But the biggest thing I wanted to get into with this video is to get to accent the a aspect of drive state, okay? Remember when a dog learns something, he is being shown and, and taught. We usually use a lot of luring, a lot of food to get those behaviors. And the drive state is a different intensity. It's a different level, okay? And then if I have a high drive dog like Buddy, I bring out a toy and I get him excited because I want speed. I want really nice little poppy jerky type of, you know, down, boom, he drops fast. He comes right into my side real quick. Comes right into that finish posture real quick. I want that because it looks good, right? But then we lose our accuracy. If you notice Buddy working this morning, he was bouncing all over the place. He's being a kind of a pain in the ass, right? So what I'm trying to get across to you folks is to be very conscious and aware of drive state. I will bring out food and I will set the dog and I'll get a flow going and get that dog's drive state in a nice steady posture. And then I'll bring out food, excuse me, bring out toys for other things that I want more speed and I want more uh, kind of a hyperactive type of a action when they hear the command, right? And then I go one step further and I cue the dog with their name, okay? That's not legal in, in a co competition sense, right? So I want to distinctly kind of separate the fact there's a lot of people out there that do this for sport and the accuracy is a lot more intent. If you look at somebody like Oscar Mora that's doing ring sport and doing some of the other uh, bite sports, his dog Guapo is very exact. That's why he's one of the top trainers in the area right now because that dog is just really precise. Makes him look real good. Now we'll see what he can do with the other dogs he gets in as, as the years go by because it's all about uh, being able to get this another dog up to that level to get him peaked to get him to be able to compete and get those same scores. And it fluctuates, believe me, because every day is different. You know, you get out there one day with a dog and he'll throw you something you didn't even expect because you're on the trial field. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, things that happen to you in that regards. And the same kind of thing, it's drive dogs, you get a little bit savvy, ring savvy, and they start to throw some, some curves your way and you never know what's gonna happen on competition day, so. I'll let you guys go, but again, awareness of and cognizant of drive states, very important. Food gives you one, toy gives you another. Each one has its pros and cons, right? I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Mark Frasher, Protect Dog Training.